Hello everyone. So I thought I'd um, do a little sort of product over overview or review of this smart battery charger. A smart charger. Um, now I've had this for a good two years, and I think it works pretty good. I think it's a pretty solid charger. Uh, for the money, it seems to have worked really, really well for me because I can take this outdoors by um, connecting it to a battery as an input, and I can also use it at home by repurposing an old power supply. This is a, an old power supply for. Let me just readjust the camera a bit. Um, an old power supply from an um, Xbox. And this is like the big Xbox brick, it's 150 watts, you can see that there. And that is just okay for this, this particular battery charger. It's okay for me to do the jobs I need to with this battery charger um, indoors. So let's give it a quick little power up. But before I do that, I'm just going to go over uh, very quickly the warnings and safety tips because this is a must when it comes to charging lipo batteries well whichever batteries you're charging well you don't really want to leave them unattended so uh, make sure that if you're going to be charging be in the room or at least have it conscious in your mind if it's you know on a desk behind you or whatever that you're charging batteries and things can go wrong this does if it finds anything um well but put it this way, I, I've, on my balance charger, I think there's a cable that's not quite correct, and it just throw an error while I'm charging, stop the charging process, which is great, and then makes me confirm it by hitting the um, hitting this uh, this wheel here. Um, you need to keep this away from dust; don't get it get too clogged up. Um, high humidity, rain, high temperature, and avoid direct sunlight and exposure to lots of high vibrations. So. If you and sometimes you know I'll I'll be a bit naughty because I may be driving from one location to another and charging batteries while I drive, but I do have a part in the back of my van where it's just metal and that's where I'll normally sit. So we can you know reduce the chance of something going wrong. Power input of the charger is direct current and it's between seven and thirty-two volts. And make sure the polarities are correct when you're plugging in. It's an XT60 connector there and place the uh, the charger on a heat resisting non-flammable insulated surface so because the last thing you want this thing to do is be getting too warm and it possibly catch now I've never come it's never come close to that with me um, and I charge you know sort of like three four packs at a time sometimes like these you know these are 2.2 amps and I charge three or four packs at a time. Now I do do very, I do like half C charge rates on pretty much everything. It's, um, it's, it's, it's the, if you don't know the C rating of your 18650s, it's good just to go for half C rating. So like these are, these are 3000 milliamp, three amps. And so one and a half amps is fine. I'd normally charge them about 1.2, just cause you know, that's how I do it. I'm never in a massive rush. Uh, when it comes to the batteries and for these these are 2.2 amps and i'd normally charge these around about 1 1.1 anyway so uh, make sure that the uh, there's a fan in the back make sure that that's always kept um, able to vent the air out don't have that blocked at all because otherwise everything's going to get really warm in there and not only do you cause a, a, a possible problem through overheating but it will also degrade the components life a lot quicker if they are being overheated so that's always good um, understand the charging and discharging characteristics of your batteries as well like I said you know uh, if, it, if your minds if you don't know what the C rating is you know you go for half C so on 3 amp 1.5 amps and uh, and the same for the, the, the lipos I mean you can you know, because these are what they, they're 25C. So, if I was to um, times this up, I should be able to charge this at a lot higher rates than what I do. But for safety, I don't. And you know, some people say, well, you, you can charge it in double quick time and everything. Yeah, but I just don't. I just don't. And to be honest with you, um, 
I don't really find it that necessary to do it like that, but it's your choice. Everyone gets to make the choices on these things, but keep them um, within the, the safety spec, and I normally go for half C charge ratings, just because that's the way I, I like to do it. And I've had my batteries for years. I've had my batteries for years. They don't, you know, don't look at this, like I can't. Um, I, I don't know how old these batteries are now, but they're at least two years old, at least two years old, three years old possibly. Um, and they're still getting strong. So, and there's another thing as well, but I'll show you that once we get the charger on. So, let me just plug in this power supply. Uh, first one, I'm just going to plug this into here. Now, the way I've set this up here is like, it's pretty crude, but it doesn't. Do it. This is the the switch that would normally switch on your uh, on the power supply. It detects. Um, so these wires I've just twisted together, and I'm going to plug that into there. Plug this in here. And here we go. So, we've not got a battery connector at the moment, so I'm going to connect one in front of you guys. And here you'll see, I don't know if you can see that that well. Maybe I adjust the light, but I've adjusted the light to the best as I can to not get any particular glare on. You should be able to see there's a little notch down here. Um, that just means that you're going to place this notch in and it just ensures that the ground goes to where the ground should be and the uh oh <clears throat> and he just put that in the wrong one so uh, trying to look through the camera and do this at the same time so I'm just, I'm just trying to keep the glare off the screen so here we go uh plug in the batteries it's a four cell battery so you can see all four cells and you can see the voltage on the cell and you can see what voltage the total is for the battery you can also see we should be able to on the next one i think it is oh for some reason i can't see the input voltage but we'll when we come around to that in a second but if i just quickly just hold down on this just go back there for a second and hold into here so this is if you press this um I can't remember what they call this, but just press this uh, rotation uh, button in because it's it rotates. Like that. Let me just set that back to 130 watts because that's my maximum power input. This is 150 watt um, power supply, so without trying to make it run full board, um, if I just do the max input as 130, the minimum input input voltage is 11 volts. There, um, this is a 12 volt supply, so that's all okay. That light is automatic. Uh, now this makes the screen go lighter or darker. I don't know if you can see on the camera so well, but there is a little tiny. I don't know if you should just be able to see that. That's a sensor. So if I put my finger over there, I'm just trying to see if it will actually act like that and compensate. There you go. With the lamp there, it compensates. If I take that away, yeah. So which is pretty good because if you're out in the field, which is what I use this for. Uh, generally, um, then um, it's if it's a really sunny day and the sun's you know sort of uh, on on the screen, it can make it hard to see. So for that lighting up, that's pretty good. I really do like that about it. We get our volume for all of the the noises that it's going to be making. Uh, where you heard it there, where I just put it in the wrong way around, which is really good because it just tells you it's high voltage, throws an error, and it won't do anything. It's you know it sort of protects itself. It is quite a smart charger. Completion tone, uh, you can set this so uh, you can repeat. And if I just move down these for you, uh, single or repeat, I get it to repeat it in case I'm just not listening correctly or I've stepped out of the room. Uh, the firmware show, I'm not going to go into any of this sort of stuff at the moment. So we've got different languages, mine's set to English. System self check in, that's pretty good. So you can just hit that and let it do a, let it do a self check. Again, if there's an error, just press that so we, uh, we're happy that we've pulled that error out. Uh, so we go into the system self check again. Oh, let's just go. There. So it's just happy with itself that everything's working as it should be. Uh, this back go thing, I've not really looked into that particularly. There's um, that's something I could uh, look into. But that's it for its system settings. So we're going to go back now. Again, we've got no voltage there. So I'm going to re put the voltage back in. Let's get that the right way around this time. And this time, um, did it again. 
I did it again. I'm so used to doing this on the uh, the balance board and not plugging directly into it because the balance board is always left in. But that's fine. It goes to show again that we have um, a good system that is just going to give you a warning that you've done something wrong. Nothing goes bang. Nothing goes pop. And uh, we're we're good with that. Now let me show you. I've got mine set up. So as you can see, look, I've got it on one amp there. If I was going to start doing this, so. You've got your, your tasks, which will be charge, discharge, and storage. Now, it says that you can go up to 3 amps discharging. That does not happen. It never does. I think it's uh, 8 watts maximum discharging. So, depending on how many cells you have, um, you can maybe work that out for yourself, depending on which battery you know, for how long it's going to take to discharge. I've got a separate little piece of kit, a uh, cheap piece of kit, uh, also doubles up as a servo um, something that I can uh, set up my servos with and that's much better for discharging so but you can charge and you can discharge and, and you can set your storage now the, if I do have a little bit of a yeah with this is this is not as solid as it used to be sometimes it will miss sometimes it will jump a couple but if you're just gentle with it it's still it's still good it's not a it's not a negative it just doesn't seem to feel as uh, as, as great as it did first time around so we're on the task of charge our battery type is a lipo it does have several different battery charges uh, lihv uh, lipo looking looking iron life pd uh, which is uh, your like car batteries and the nickel cadiums so I've set mine on to the LiPo, and now we've got the cell voltage. How high do I want this to charge? Now, it's got a thumbs up there for 4.2, which is which is ideal. That's going to charge it up fully, and um, but I just charge mine just slightly under. It really doesn't make a great deal of difference. But if you, I, I look at it like this: so if I'm going to put a full stress on this every single time, it's almost like trying to run it full board. So I just drop it a little bit under for the you know for the little bit of restricted um, power there I may get a bit, little bit of extra life out of the battery and I can't afford to keep changing batteries and, and stuff like that it's, uh, I do understand they are consumables and you are going to get through batteries but I don't you know I don't fly my packs like that I just fly around just general mirandering a lot of the time or, or try and go for a little bit more of a long distance thing now, if I do that I will go to the 4.2 if I know that I'm going to try for let's see how long we can keep it up in the air for like with my quad I've managed to get 20 minutes out of one of these battery packs and I think that's pretty good I think that's pretty good. So I'm just going to leave that there just for now. Um, it will do an automatic cell count. You can adjust it if you want to, but because it counts uh, itself anyway, and it will go from 1S all the way up to 6S, which is brilliant. Taking into account, it will do the 1S. Uh, and then the current, of course, you know, you can take this all the way up to 14 amps. If you so decide, you see the little jumps there when I was just doing that. <laughs> like that. So if I it's a good that like, you get to see that there's a there's just a little tiny bit on there but it's fine it could just be a little bit of dust or something maybe i could take it apart but i'm just gonna where is that down and get that down to the one good, 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 good. but generally look as you can see that's pretty darn good you see the big jump then when i just moved it like a couple of clicks and it's gone straight from there to there that can be a little bit annoying but I'm not gonna, you know, 1.1 is, is fine for this as well. I, to be honest with you, I could charge this at a lot higher rate, but I'm, I'm just, I just don't. I just don't. Uh, if I'm, you know, if I end up putting four packs on, yeah, if I end up putting another three packs on, I've got four packs running on it, then yeah, you know, I'll put four amps on there or something like that. But I just, I just don't tend to do that. And then we just get down to start. I'm not gonna do a charge on the battery. Doesn't really seem to be much point. Um, um, then we can go back but I do like this whole screen thing here because if you pop down there as well you get to see now the input input battery uh, input voltage which is 12.2 volts that's what this is reading as uh, you know you, you, you don't expect it to be um, absolute spot on I mean that could be correct it may not be correct it's going to be around that voltage which is just okay we've got 
temperature we've got the amount of pieces i believe this is the amount of uh, times so i've cycled this for charging 172 times oh, that's pretty good that's pretty good um i don't actually know what these are for let's have a little quick look and i'll bring up the um imagery on here for it tells you what that's actually for if it tells you i'll tell you something else it should show us as well if we hit down i think we have to start it so let's just do the start and then if i confirm current stop let's go back what i'm looking for is there we go we will get to see the um the amount of resistance on each of the cells which is pretty good but just let it let it go through a little bit first before it will show us that so even though we're charging now we're charging at 1.1 amps we've got six milliamps gone in um we will get to see very shortly once it's taken those measurements of oh, <laughs> it's missing now <laughs> i've got to go back upwards there we go so now we get to see the um resistance now nine milliamps that's quite a bit 1.8.1 nine million so that's quite a bit but that will change as this is becoming more charged and it will change as it's becoming discharged as well but it's a pretty good charger like i see yeah you know, like i say i've had it now for uh, the amount of time I've had it, I can't remember exactly when I bought it, but I do remember this summer it's been kicking around. It's not really done anything this year because of all these lockdowns. Um, but last year it was with me out in the field. The year before that it was with me. And so you know, there's a there's a couple of there's a couple of years there. It's well out of the warranty. It can get a bit noisy when that fan starts going around, but. Like personally I don't care if it's cooling down the internal components I'm happy it's doing its job as it should be doing so I don't mind about that at all um, some people that might irritate them when it's in here and everything's really quiet and it's on it does seem quite noisy but it's a little tiny fan trying to do a lot of air movement so you've got to expect that a bit if you can have a, a bigger case you know with a bigger fan in there then you may be able to slow it down and it won't seem so loud but I think if that's the only fault and a little bit of a miss on this from time to time, it never used to be like that. That's something I've noticed recently. Um, it could just be dust in there. So it might need just taking apart and taking that out and giving it a bit of a, a clean out. Um, if that's the only problems uh, I can find with it, I'm more than more than happy. Like I said, if I'm using this indoors, I'll I'll charge with this uh, power supply at the back here. But if I'm using it out in the, I'll use this battery here because it's a um, 25 volt battery, 22.2 nominal, uh, and 10 amps, which you know gives me quite a lot of uh, power, there, about 250 watts of power, and ideal to take out. And it means that I can, um, you know, get another four or five, uh, even six, depending on the voltage that I come back in with, with a battery pack, I can get another uh, six charges at least out of it. And you can, you know, because I've made up little bits and pieces, I can charge my phone and all sorts, different charges on there as well, which is, is great. It's absolutely great. So if anyone said to me, hey, would you recommend this to anybody? I'd say, yeah. Yeah, for the price, I think about £35. Uh, and that's not going to equate to much more in dollars, to be honest with you, the way things are. Um, very good. Very good. It does everything that you'd hope a charger would do, and include in throwing out the errors, which is um, fantastic, because that is the safety side of things for me is very, very important when it comes to these things. So we go back up there. You can see, look, the, the if you roll back the video a bit, you'll see that the the actual uh, resistances are changing and the voltage is just going up very very slightly because it's only charging at a half a C so let me just um, put this into how you stop this then so it's that easy to, to stop this thing and as you can see I've I actually switched on I just done it again so I, I, I forgot to do the stop part so that easy to stop this it's just you can adjust the current while you're going, or you can just go for stop 
or go back again so you, you just continue what you're doing um, you'll see, you can see that just continues but I'm going to go to the stop now hit that and there we go when it's charged you'll have two indicators of it being charged you'll have a pretty much quick charged which will give you a green screen and a beep to let you know hey you charge your packs ready to go but if you want it all to be thoroughly balanced leave it until the blue screen kicks in and it will give you an indication then just by leaving it alone when the green screen's there and it will give you an indication then by showing you a blue screen and beeping beep beep giving it pause in for a time and beep beep again uh, to let you know that it's actually fully charged and balanced so there's another option with the charging there where you get to take it off if you want to just quickly get off and get your flight done and uh, or just leave it for it's fully balanced so there you go guys that's my uh, my impressions of this and i hope you uh, enjoyed the video any comments please stick down in the old comments section and uh, leave us a thumbs up if you if you like what i've done here speak to you again soon take care everyone bye bye for now